Well, we're into the second half of this letter of 1 Timothy. I called the sermon I preached on this section a good minister. I took this title from verse 6, where Paul says, If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus. And in this section, Paul is turning to Timothy himself, um, addressing him very personally, but it's in the hearing of the whole of the Ephesian church. So this letter is addressed to Timothy, but it's a letter for the church, and Timothy, their pastor, is being personally addressed in this section. As always, I do encourage you just to take some time to read the passage a few times yourself and spend some time praying. Uh, prayer is the frontline activity in preparation for digging into God's Word. Uh, we want to ask God by His Spirit to give us ears to hear Him speak. In this letter, salvation of sinners is right in the spotlight. We've seen this in chapter 1 verse 15, and chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, and a number of other places where Paul is just saying to Timothy, you need to keep this truth at the center of everything uh, that you do to be a good minister. And we see the truth uh, in focus here again. There are those who are twisting the truth, but Paul wants Timothy to be nourished on the truth, and it's these things uh, that are in line with the truth. It is a truth that is all about salvation. And we see here again, he says, we put our hope in the living God who is the saviour of all people, especially of those who believe. Now, just thinking about uh, what it is that uh, Paul is saying to Timothy in order to be a good minister, it's gonna, he's going to be somebody who keeps the truth of salvation central in all that he does. And if we look at this, in three parts. Um, these opening verses, one to five, are showing that as a good minister, um, Timothy and any good minister must point out those who have abandoned the faith and are, are teaching uh, false truths. In the second section, he's saying it is the truth that needs to uh, be shaping and transforming and building uh, a good minister up. He needs to be somebody who is changed by the truth. And then in verse 11 to 16, it is the truth that needs to shape everything that a good minister teaches. So he needs to point out false teachers. He needs to be uh, strengthened, built up, changed by the truth. And he needs to make sure that he teaches the truth well. Another key idea in the whole of 1 Timothy is uh, Paul refers to the faith. And by this, he means the gospel. So it's the faith and salvation through our Lord Jesus. And here we see people have abandoned or departed from the faith. Uh, here he's saying actually you need to be nourished by the truths of the faith. Um, you need to grow in faith. Set an example in your faith. And then a word very much linked with faith is uh, the word believe. And Paul wants a good minister to live in a way and teach in a way that will hold up and hold out the living God who is the saviour of all people so that others will believe. We see a couple of contrasts in this. Uh, we see that the good teacher needs to have a good teaching and teaching doctrine that they are uh, following. But the false teachers we see, they are they, things taught by demons. So it's uh, false teaching. And another contrast that can be missed is over here where the NIV translates it, they've abandoned the faith and follow deceiving spirits. Uh, that could be they are devoted, devoted to uh, deceiving spirits. And the contrast there is that these guys are devoted to deceiving spirits, but Timothy or a good minister is to devote himself to God's truth. That is found in God's word. A few things to note in verses 1 to 5 where Paul talks about the later times. That is now the days we're living in at the moment. The days between uh, Jesus' ascension into heaven and when he comes back. We are living in the time between Jesus' ascension and his return. Uh, Paul talks about that as 
the later times. So we're in those days now. Now he says here, the Spirit clearly says, we, we aren't told exactly how the Spirit told him this, but if you want to go and cross-reference um, Acts 20, verse uh, 23, where you see also the Spirit had given Paul a message. Um, we aren't told exactly how that happened, but Paul was convinced that this was the message that he needed to pass on to Timothy to warn him that in later times some will abandon the faith. That's a terrible word, abandon or depart from. And they'll, def they'll follow deceiving spirits. Now, the Old Testament background for this, uh, if you go to 1 Kings 22, uh, we see there the prophet of the Lord up against the prophets of the Lord with a small L. They, they aren't actual prophets. And there we hear the terrifying words that the Lord says, I will put a lying spirit in their mouths to tell the king what he wants to hear, which will actually lead to his destruction. And so when we see these deceiving spirits, uh, one thing that we need to believe is um, the false teaching in the church is one of God's judgments on the church. That's what you see in 1 Kings 22, these lying spirits are part of God's judgment. So false teachers coming in and teaching these things are a part of God's judgment on the church for not holding tightly to the truth. Um, we have to believe this if we believe in the sovereignty of God. And so we need to pray that we won't be a church who fall under God's judgment, but rather we will be a church who continue to rejoice in and hold tightly to the salvation of sinners through Jesus. That's the truth we want to keep holding tightly to. And a good minister will point out those who aren't holding to that truth. And what we see here is that um, these are teachers with seared consciences. Um, they, they've been numbed to the truth. And what we see them doing, forbidding people marrying and forbidding telling people they need to abstain from certain foods, it's kind of aesthetic abstaining um, that they are telling people that's going to make you a better Christian. And Paul is saying, no, 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 that is not the truth. Actually, that is deceitful teaching and it is demonic teaching. It's quite a massive statement that, that Paul makes here. Um, it's not just dangerous, it's demonic. So a good minister will highlight uh, how bad that teaching is. And then what Paul does here is he takes us back to creation and he shows us that everything that God created is good. And if you want to go and read after the flood, uh, Genesis 9 verse 3, God gave Noah the animals to eat. And then at the end of the creation account in Genesis 1, Verse 31, we see God saying that it is very good. And what Paul is highlighting is that these false teachers were coming in and they were saying, no, these things aren't good. But actually Paul is saying they are gifts from God that should be received with thanksgiving. He says it twice, received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and with prayer. We receive these gifts with thanksgiving um, because we understand them through God's word. We know that they've been given us by God. And so we give thanks for them through our prayers. And so Paul is saying to the good minister, Tim Timothy, show those who aren't holding tightly to the truth, those who are teaching false truth. And then he speaks about Timothy's own life. And he says that his own life needs to be shown to be one that is nourished on the truth. He says, nourished on the truth. And he says, built up, so train yourself to be godly. A good minister needs to show that the truth actually changes him. Now, in verse 9 here, we see a trustworthy saying. We've seen two of these already. The first one was there in chapter 1, verse 15. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The trustworthy saying as I understand it here, is, is not actually what follows in verse 10, but it's pointing back to what's just come in verse 
uh, 9, uh, particularly this godliness has value for all things. And he's saying, actually, if you are a godly minister, that'll make you a good minister because it will show that this truth that you believe, this truth that you are teaching actually is doing a work in you. It's making you increasingly godly. We saw that at the end of chapter 3, that the truth should be seen in our godly living. And that needs to be modeled by the good minister first. And this godly living, Paul says, holds promise for both the present life and the life to come. So our living shows in a tangible way uh, how our salvation is at work within us and in a sense shows that we are guaranteed that life to come. It's not because of our godliness we only get the life to come because of Jesus. But if Jesus has truly saved us, we will become increasingly godly, giving proof that the life to come is truly ours. And so Paul says that is why we labor and strive, laboring and striving, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the savior of all people, especially of those who believe. A good minister wants people to believe. And so... He will be somebody who commands and teaches the truth. And we see a number of different ways that Paul speaks about this here. So he says, command and teach, but also set an example. So it's not just the verbal proclamation, but also living the truth in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. And then he says, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture he says, be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that people may see your progress. As a good minister is rejoicing in his salvation through Jesus, he wants others to know this. That's why he's laboring and striving. So he commands and teaches these things, set an ex set, setting an example by his life. And here he is devoted. He's not like the false teachers, devoted to things taught by demons. He's, taught, he's devoted to what has been taught in the scriptures. It's God's truth that he's devoted to. And so he diligently gives himself wholly to this glorious work of making this truth about Jesus known. And he wants people to see his progress. Paul says here, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. And Timothy was probably in his late 20s, but most likely his early to mid 30s. And by saying all of these things, talking about Timothy's way of life, he's, he's saying, let your life be a life that causes people to look up to you, not look down on you. And as they look up to you, that will cause them to want to listen as you command and teach these things. Uh, all these truths that you're learning from Scripture, give yourself to this wholly and let people see your progress. I started by saying that this is a very personal section and you can see that um, by all the yous and the yours and the yourselves that Paul uses in this section. So he's very much turned to Timothy. It's as if his hands are on Timothy's shoulders and he's giving uh, some vital input to uh, this young minister to help him to better lead this church. And throughout this section, we see uh, what are called imperatives. Um, so those are verbs that are commands, and there are a whole number of imperatives throughout this section. And it's always uh, useful to, to look out for imperatives when you're in um, a letter like this. They often just help to show Paul's um, emphasis. But you see there's a whole lot of emphasis. He's saying a whole lot of things that are imperative, very important for Timothy to take on board. And in many ways, the most important imperative for this good minister is this call to devote himself to Scripture. So hold tightly to the truth so that you can hold out the truth of salvation through Jesus. And a good minister will do this, pointing out those who don't, himself being changed by the truth and with a devotion to teaching this truth to those who the Lord has put under his care. And if you are a good minister, these are the types of things that you should be praying that uh, you are making progress in. 
If you are in a church, then these are the types of things that you should be praying for your minister. Pray that your minister would have a, a firm resolve to, to be devoted to the truth that Jesus saves. That they will be bold enough to point out teachers who are teaching other truths, false truths. That they themselves will be changed by the truth and that they, they will be devoted to teaching the truth. If that's the case, then this truth of salvation through Jesus will indeed uh, ring out from churches with ministers like that. And so let's be praying for good ministers in churches across the globe so that God would be glorified in his church. Well, God bless as you dig in further. <music>